yeah, I'm the guy now standing between the beer at the end of the conference. And uh, so I try my best and to keep in time. Um, we will have a talk, or I will have a talk about Angular PWA technology and pitfalls. And uh, first, something about me. Yeah, that's me. I really love traveling around and I love beaches. And to be honest, I don't know exactly where this picture was taken. But um, yeah, it was sure great there. So I'm a senior consultant and partner at 2Bit. And I work in the areas of front-end development with Angular and architecture and technology consulting. I personally really like to pass on my knowledge to other people. And therefore, I teach at the University of Applied Science in Rapperswil and Lucerne. As you can see on the picture, I'm always looking for new inspiration and new things I can try out. Sometimes they fall or drop off of the heaven. Usually they don't. But yeah, that's how I work. So what will we face in the next 25 minutes? We will have a look at the existing PWA. And then we will build our first Angular PWA uh, from scratch. And we will learn about requirements which will strongly lead you in the direction of a PWA. So before we start with that, um, who of you knows what a progressive web app is? Very good. <laughs> OK. And who has already built one? Yeah, still quite a lot. Who has already built one with Angular? Yeah, for you guys, I'm sorry. <laughs> because you probably will not get too much out of the talk. But yeah, let's see about that. OK, so just in short terms, what is a progressive web app? A progressive web app is fast. So if we know that 50% of users will abandon your site if it takes longer than three seconds to load it, um, then this is very important. In addition, once loaded, we don't want to have any janky scrolling or stuff like that. We want the user interface to be very responsive and to interact with us over our actions. It should be reliable, regardless of the network state we have. By pre-caching resources, you can eliminate the dependence on the network and ensuring an instant and re reliable experience independence of the network. Another very important point is engaging. PWAs are engaging because they're installed on the user's home screen and they offer an immersive full screen experience. And you can re-engage with users by using push notifications. OK, now, so that are the most common characteristics of a PWA. We will just shortly um, have a look at an existing one. And for that, I will use the emulator. Oop, there it is. So what we see here, I will make it a little bit bigger. Um, we see here the prompt. This is happening automatically if you have a PWA, your site is a PWA on Android. It will get prompted that you install the application on your home screen. So let's do that. And now it asks us if we really want to do that. And let's say we really want to. And now the PWA gets installed. Let's check that. And we should see it right here somewhere. Let's move away this one. Yeah, it doesn't want to. So there it is. We have now the PWA installed. Let's open it. And it really looks like an app, so we don't have any browser boundaries on stuff like that. OK, cool. Let's test the next feature. What about push notifications? So we will close the app, because that's how it is usually. You don't have all your apps open and waiting that somebody sends you a push notification. And we will send it over the admin application. I will just send a document to this guy. Just anything, it doesn't matter at all. So let's just pick the right guy, that's important. OK, so I will send out a push notification. And what we would expect, like in a regular app, we will get a notification um, on our Android phone. If we go back here, we see here, whoops, that's a little bit difficult. <laughs> yeah, we see here we got a push notification right here. And we can add context to it. We see, OK, a document was sent to me. We can change the icon of the notification, stuff like that, like we are used to if we would build a native application. 
And if I click on it, we can directly jump into the app. We see the splash screen. And we will get redirected to the page where we now could receive our document, which we will not do because we are not interested in that. OK, so we have now a short brush up what PWA is and how this works. And now we will build one from scratch. Obviously, not really from scratch. We will take an existing application and modify it into PWA. And before the talk, I was thinking a lot, how could we do that? What would be a good application to show some basic principles um, of PWA? And I gave it a lot of thought, and I had quite an inventing idea. And I was thinking like, yeah, let's do a to-do application. Because that's something <laughs> we all know. We know how it works. And yeah, it's really basic. So we have a to-do application, which we will transform. And to do so, we will follow requirements which will pop up during our implementation to, trans to make the transition into PWA. So let's start our journey. The first requirement arrives, and the first thing is, yeah, well, it needs to work even if we, if we are offline, because um, a lot of people are, especially in Switzerland, traveling by train, and as you might are aware of, in train, the connection is not always as steady, especially around Zurich, believe me. Um, yeah, it's very difficult. So we need to have to make this application work if it's offline. OK, so let's test that. For that, we will just check the current application, how it is working. So this is our current application, how it looks like. It's a to-do application. We have some to-do items which, which are initially loaded. And yeah, it's nothing special. Let's check the experience if we are offline. And this is this really amazing, the dyno. That's really great. Yeah, we love that. But yeah, it's, it's really difficult to use to do application in that way. So to make it into a PWA, it's, it's, we need to do something very tricky with the Angular CLI. We will just add the PWA, uh, yeah package to our application. So what it's doing right now, the CLI is not only installing this application, it makes some transformation by schematics into our application. OK, that's enough. Um, and it has added some files. What do we would expect now that we have already a working PWA? So let's check that. We have to build it again, and that's a little bit sad. And you will go several times during this talk through that because the offline uh, the, the service worker is not published if you're not building in the prod mode. So you cannot test it like you used to with ng-serve. Well, you can test your application with ng-serve, but not the PWA functionality. So we have to build it again. And now let's check the experience. We probably should get offline first. And let's wait until the page is loaded. OK, looks great. Page is loaded. Let's go offline again. And let's check the experience. Yeah, that's nice. So offline capability more or less already done. Not quite. Because we see here our items are missing. Where are our initial items gone? And for that, we have to check what happened within our code. And let's check the configuration of our service worker. And what we see here, we are not caching the initial loaded items because they are in a JSON file. And we will fix that issue. We just add the JSON. So we say the service worker, please cache the JSON too. And now again, we do something great. We build it and wait until the build is done. <laughs> uh, but at least as web developer, we are used to that because we are a lot of times waiting uh, for Webpack or whatever you're using until the build is finished. Um, yeah. At least it's quite fast. So uh, the build is now more or less done. And we can recheck if the items will now appear if we are in offline mode. First of all, we have to go online again. We have to load the application. Let's wait until the cache pass has happened so that we have, yeah, there, that we have the current state of the PWA. Let's go offline again. And what we would expect we should now see the initial items. Yeah, we did great. OK, so, but that's just the beginning. We will now go on 
and change the title because now this is really a PWA and let's change that to hello PWA. Yeah, great. And yeah, what comes next? <laughs> yeah, we build it again. So we change the title um, that we are prepared for the next step and we just wait now until the build is finished and check for the update. So we would expect now that if we go online again, that the title here will change. And we'll see here, except MVC plus S architecture, we would expect hello PWA. So let's check for that. Hopefully the build is now through. Yeah, great. Okay, so we reload that. Huh. And I was like, um, okay, what happened right here? Um, I did not understand it. I was like, okay, first where are the items gone? And now where is the title gone? I, I don't understand it. That's crazy. I mean, we just saw the change. But to know what happened, we need to know a little bit more about the states within a PWA and how that works. So first of all, we have the service worker, which is pre-caching the key resources. And it will check in the background if there is an update available. To do so, um, it will compare the files bytewise. What is important, if the update happens, it only completes this if all the files, the, the changed files, can be loaded. So this means if your PWA consists of a lot of files, it gets more likely that the update will fail because it cannot load any of these files or one of these files, and then the new service worker will not get installed. So be aware of that. So as soon as the service worker is updated, who will go into idle state and waits until you reload the page and then the new service worker will go active. I mean, that's great, but I'm a regular user. I will not know, how shall I know that there is another service working ready and a new application ready for me? That's quite difficult. So let's do something about that. Um, to do so, we will write a new service. And for that, again, we can use the CLI. We will write service, call um, update into our project. So uh, there is the keyword missing. So this will generate our service now. And what we need to do now is to write a few lines of code. Oh, this is bad. Oh, the ad, yeah. Thank you very much. Perfect. <laughs> so we will generate the service right now. And we have to write the review lines of code. What we like to do is we would like to notify the user that there is a new version available and to reload the page. And we do that with a toast. So first of all, we will inject the update service from Angular and we will inject the snack bar from material design. So we can notify the user. So let's import these two things. And now let's write some code to check for the update. So first of all, we will check if there is anything available. And we subscribe to, through that. OK. And then we check if there really is an update available. And in that case, we will do the toast. So we say over the snack bar, OK, please, um, snack bar open, new version available, and we will give there an action to reload the page so that the user just can click a button and then the page gets reloaded and he has the latest version of the service worker. So to do so, um, on action, we subscribe to the action. In that case, let's just reload the site and we do that quite simple, it's just um, the document, location, <coughs> reload, so. So, I hope you can read it, more or less. Um, okay, so let's check this out. We will build the new application. And now the update should happen. So. Let's wait for that, just a few seconds, and we will can reload the page. What happens now, the new service worker gets loaded, it will go into idle state, so we will not have any toasting yet if we do a change. We need to do a second change now to check if the toast is working properly. So let's do that, wait until the build is done. 
and reload the application. Okay, this is done. Now let's reload it. And now let's just wait until um, the service worker gets updated. It should happen right now. What we can do in the meanwhile, we will change the title again to, let's say, hello, PBA version 2. And let's build it again. As soon as this build is done and we roll the side, we would expect this update behavior to work right now. So we should get a toast from button up saying, OK, a new version is available. We have the reload action. We hit it, and the page gets reloaded, and we see the new title. That would be the, <coughs> the kind of behavior we would expect after writing this code. And this makes it more usable to a user, because he now gets notified that something has changed, and it's not working on old PWA, even so something newer is around. So let's check that. Let's wait for the cast busts until the new version of the service worker goes into idle. That happened right now. Yeah, and it didn't work yet. Somebody guessed why? There's something important we missed, because obviously we have to, re to load the service somewhere so it gets initialized, because nobody's instantiating this, and we have no eager loading angle. So let's just instantiate the service here by injecting it over the injection system. OK. So you can believe me, this will work. We will see it in the next round. We think we don't do the wait cycle again <laughs> with all the building stuff. So we will check that afterwards with um, um, how this works. Let's go back to the requirements. So we made, now, we made it now happen that we get notification about updates. And we can make the, the offline thingy. We can say we succeeded that. So we completed. Um, this requirement, and we can go to the next one. And as always, if you met the first requirement, some new are popping up. And it's like, OK, it's nice that we can work offline right now, but I want to get notified if someone else is changing, I need to do on it. And how can we do that? First of all, I mean, thanks a lot, because the new requirement is coming, even so we fulfilled the first one. But we can do it. I'm sure we can do it. And for that, we will use um, the PWA push service. and we will send the push notification not over a server because we would have to do some node hacking there. We will just send a push to notification directly through the Chrome tools. That's the easiest way to inject a push notification to our client. Um, to do so, um, first of all, we will generate a new service again, which we can use. Um, this one was it. So let's say a push service. We will generate this one. And we have, again, write to several lines of code to make this push happen so that we can react to it. So since I'm already a little bit tired, I'm waiting for the beer. I make it very easy for me. <laughs> and cheat a little bit. So <laughs> what we will do, we'll inject the SW push service from Angular and our to-do service. To-do service is the thing holding the data for us. So we then request a subscription, and you need for that a subscription key. If you have none for testing purpose, you can easily do that. There's npm package web push, and you can generate the key uh, in no time. So in the next step, if there happens uh, a push notification, we probably should react to that. And for that, we have to write some few lines of code too, which we'll format right now. And what happens here? If the push notification is received through the PWA, we will handle the click event. So this means if, if he clicks uh, on the action on it, on the notification, something should happen. And what we would like to do here, we will update the corresponding to-do item. To do so, we first find the item with the corresponding ID, and we update the internal state of the to-do item. So that's more or less um, the main idea. And again, we have to register that somewhere because else nothing will happen. Let's check how this works out. So let's rebuild the whole thing and let's hope we did not forget anything. Which is, uh, we have high chances for that. I tested it twice and uh, I never succeeded yet. <laughs> But probably we can do that right now, or hopefully. OK, let's wait until this thing is built. 
what we will expect if this gets through and both of these things we did are working okay, we will reload the page, the toast pops up, um, I can push the reload button, and then we are ready to receive push notifications. And if we send one, we can click on it and it will do some change uh, within here. So let's check that. Okay, this work is loaded. Now let's let's wait until the new work is loaded and goes into idle. That happened right now. But somehow, still no update notification. Yeah, let's ignore that. Then we have to reload um, the server again to be sure that we are not in idle state anymore. And we can send now here in the Chrome tab our application a push notification directly which isn't happening either, which is not ideal. So we are again at the 50% where it's not working. <laughs> um, has somebody an idea why? Because I think the services are in place, everything is stored. Hmm. Um, no idea. What I can try is... This happened once, that the push is not working, and then I had to restart my PC. <laughs> <laughs> so, we cannot do that. We can hope it works. Well, let's see. Yeah, no push there, that's sad. But we have to live with that anyhow. Um, you can check out the code later, it should work. Um, it's really easy, usually you will, you will write it um, more dedicated than just here. But uh, yeah, just check it out. Angular provides you a lot of stuff which, makes much, which makes things much easier for you to do these things. So, especially the update service um, and of course uh, the push service here. So, okay. So, is prog are, are progressive web apps the savior of it all? I mean, you can do a lot of cool things with it, and you can bring an experience to the user which is quite close to an app. But helps you, but it has some disadvantages, or let's say, as all of the things, and there's especially one disadvantage, um, I want to talk about, and that is one fruit hanging on the tree which is not behaving uh, very good with PWA. And so on iOS there are a lot of issues which are still not working properly. And you can see that, for example, with push notifications. Push notifications on iOS are not available. You can use it on Mac OS X. There is it working on Safari, but you cannot use it on iOS. The offline capability is working in general, but has some flaws. Um, it can be happen that the PWA gets installed multiple times. That's then quite bad. And device functionality there is not supported as widely as, for example, on Android. <coughs> However, I want to show you a short video how two-factor authentication now works on Apple and about on iOS and about states within PWAs in iOS. Yeah. So, um, let's just start it. We will see the difference here. First of all, we will have no prompt on iOS to install the PWA. So, you have to do it manually and you need to be an experienced user to do so, as we can see. So, we can add the link now uh, on our home screen. The manifest gets ignored and we don't have any splash screen there. So, yeah, this is not happening. However, Two-factor authentication is working now. I don't know, maybe some of you guys heard about the Twitter fail with PWA because it was resetting the state and you were not ever a never able to log in into, into the PWA um, if you had two-factor uh, authentication ready. But since iOS 12.2, this is working. And what we see here, what is a little bit strange, if we close the app and reopen the app, we will get to the state, we see that right now, which we were before. So what I would expect if I start the app freshly, I get to the dashboard or to the initial route of the application. 
Um, it seems like on iOS, it seems a little bit different. It just goes to the last page where you were. So this bug was introduced with 12.2, where they fixed the two-way authentication thingy. So I don't know what will pop up there. But yeah. Anyhow, thanks a lot for your attention. I hope you uh, get uh, or you are interested in, uh, in trying out more about PWA. And we have a workshop in Zurich about two days going deeper into that if you're interested. And yeah, let's uh, have the end of the conference beer. And thank you very much for your attention. Bye.